good afternoon everybody now we have reached on the sixth and last day of the webinar on higher education as envisaged in national education policy 2020 today is the valedictory day we have listened different aspects of nep 2020 its flexibility approach to education for primary to higher education and for research development we have discussed topics starting from preparing students to navigate their way into future with variety of teaching capacity professional capacity and we have also reached to the teacher capacity building and development of institutional infrastructure and creating interdisciplinary environment in higher education institutes today we have two eminent educationalists and policy maker to enrich us with their knowledge and holistic approach to higher education with special contest to odisha state they are our minister of higher education dr arun kumar sahu and vice chairman higher education Professor Ashok Kumar Das. Now, I would like to invite designer, mentor, patron of this opinion, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Ishan Kumar Patro, to give welcome address and guest introduction. Sir, please. Namaskar, uh, Honorable Minister of Higher Namaskar, Honorable Minister of Higher Education, Agriculture and FARD, Dr. Arun Kumar Sahuji, Vice Chairman of uh, Higher Education Council of Orissa, Prof. Asok Das, Dr. Uh, Gorang Charan Nanda, the Senior Fellow of ICSSR and one of the architects of this meeting, uh, Prof. Smuti Prabha Das, our uh, <coughs> CCD, the Chairperson, Council of Deans, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellors of various universities participating in this webinar, distinguished participants, dear uh, colleagues, press and media, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me today that we are completing a, a week long uh, webinar on uh, the national education policy to understand how it envisages higher education. Uh, but before I go to speak a little bit about it, uh, let me introduce to you our guest, our chief guest, uh, Dr. Arun Kumar Sahu, who was a student and started uh, his career as a politician right from his college days. He became the president of Student Union of Banky College and then the Student Union of Utkal University. Then completed his LLB and PG from Utkal University and was president of Chhatra Janta Dal was elected to Orissa Legislative Assembly in 2004 from Niagara Assembly constituency, won with a bigger margin in 2009 from the same constituency, became the deputy chief whip of BJD Legislative Party in 2009. In August 2012, became the Minister of State for Energy and Information and Public Relations. In 14, became the Minister of State for Panchayati Raj and Law and in 2019 became the Minister of State for Agriculture, f and and Higher Education until date. Was awarded the Youth Icon Award of the year 2010, has done his PhD on uh, the Praja Andolan Movement of Niagara from North Orissa University of Baripada, <coughs> is a good sportsman plays football, swims, and a sprinter. I have read somewhere in him saying that he doesn't like uh, to play cricket. And uh, his uh, great uh, literary caliber is under, understood and seen from a number of articles and poems that he publishes in various uh, magazines and newspapers. I'm told his newspaper New Year greetings every year is a most, much sought after object in the literary world because it comes with a new poem. Our uh, guest, Professor uh, um, Asok Das, uh, wishes to be introduced very briefly. 
He is a scientist of very high caliber, turned into a vice chancellor of Utkal University. After completion of his, his term as a vice chancellor, he became an academic administrator and now the vice chairman of the Higher Education Council of Orissa. He is an academician of great acclaim. When he speaks, you could understand uh, what he would like to, he, what he is like a man. Now, uh, I would start with my uh, observations on this entire webinar and the NEP 2020. And I, I request to you all to bear with me for a while. Uh, on 7th September, Honorable President of India, Sri Ram Nath Kovindji, and Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, through a uh, video conference, enlightened all the vice chancellors in presence of the chancellors on the implementation of national education policy 2020. Following this, our Honorable Chancellor, Professor Ganeshi Lalji, desired that the universities at state level should also conduct brainstorming sessions with all aspects and taking all stakeholders for eliciting their views on the desired strategy for implementation of the policy in our state, in with particular reference to higher education. So we uh, requested, I requested our uh, <clears throat> the craftsman and the real architect of this NEP 2020, Dr. Kasturi Ranganji, to spare some time and address the vice chancellors and the academicians of our state. So also I requested Dr. Uh, uh, the chairperson of the uh, AICT, Professor Sahasrabudde, and the Secretary General of uh, Association of Indian Universities, Dr. Pankaj Mittal. So we had a very nice beginning. And at the end of my uh, speech, I'll just request the organizers here, uh, Silpa, to show a uh, clipping of the first uh, thing, not now. Uh, any policy is as good as its implementation. It is written in the policy itself. <clears throat> so implementation is the biggest challenge in any policy that comes into play. In this education policy, <clears throat> the key uh, word in this, the punchline in this is education is for all. And the key for the key economic growth of India, so also for quality scientific advancement as far as higher education is concerned. I will not be talking anything about the school education because that is half of this. We are not touching upon that. Education to become holistic, integrated, flexible, enjoyable, at the same time, discovery oriented. This is a big challenge. It asks for everything from the educational institutes to do. This, uh, when I read it, it only reminds me of the integral education system that was proposed by Sri Aurobindo long back. It is en encompassing all aspects of human growth and excellence. We will have words. We will have the world's largest youth population in 2030 in India. We will have the largest population of youth. And they will be reaching towards a state where they will be moving from learning to learn to learning state. And that becomes a big challenge for educationists, the teachers, and accordingly, a lot of changes have to be there. While the West is looking towards matter alone, India as such have always been looking towards both matter and spirit. And this policy actually recalls and, and requests us all to look into the past of India and also to, to work upon so that we can one day become the same as we were at the Nalanda and Taksila times. The policy demands, and I quote, revision and revamping of all aspects of educational structure, including regulation and governance, remaining consistent with India's tradition and value system. What I, why I mean to read this is that because if you revise and revamp the entire education system, then the responsibility lies, a larger part of the responsibility lies with the governance and then with the teachers. But the teachers cannot just say that is a game of the governance and leave this. So both the teachers and the governance have got to 
go for an interplay to achieve this thing in 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 near future they do not say we wanted to do it next year they are targeting 2030 and then targeting 2040 the <clears throat> it also talks of cognitive development higher order cognitive skills including critical thinking who will bring this into the students it's only the teachers so what teachers have to be first they are educated enough to do this for the educate the, the students who are coming to study the policy mainly stands on access equity affordability and accessibility of education to all so these are words which we have been listening in almost all policies only thing is that achievability of this is a question this calls for great attention of the government in particular and the teaching community in general <clears throat> the policy says and i quote india tends towards supporting the youth to be a creative multidisciplinary and highly skilled workforce again this is a big challenge for every one of us because most of the universities we have are academic universities not technical ones and it it demands that the workforce should be highly skilled also so we have to bring in the skilled component into the entire education system now if i further quote the policy it says quality university and colleges college education must be to develop good well rounded and creative individuals while at the same time build character ethical and constitutional values intellectual curiosity scientific temper creativity spirit of service and so on these are all very big demands from the students and the teachers will have it as a challenge to really bring in to the mind and brain of a brain and heart of the students who are there in the higher education system preparing ourselves towards a atmanirbhar bharat that is what is demanded now thus higher education is uh, dedicated to knowledge creation and innovation contributing to nation's economy what would be the need to achieve all these and more expected in the policy are excellent teachers great infrastructure good and substantial funding research possibilities and leadership so i'll speak a little about all these points the policy states and i quote must help to recruit the very best and brightest to enter the teaching profession at all levels by ensuring teachers their livelihood they demand also the teachers should also get what the teachers should have their livelihood respect dignity and autonomy while also installing in the system basic methods of quality control and accessibility the challenge is both pronged it continues to say their recruitment and <clears throat> and preparation continuous professional development positive working environments and service conditions must be assured and who does it is not only the government it is government plus the teachers both do it today the status of teachers has undoubtedly and unfortunately dropped the quality of training recruitment deployment service conditions and empowerment of teachers is not where it should be this damages all the things that we are aspiring higher education as explained in the policy and i quote represents the key to move vibrant socially engaged and cooperative communi communities and a happier cohesive cultural productive and progressive prosperous nation see i am quoting the lines if you if you go through this uh, uh, policy 2020 all the lines are so attractive so difficult to really change them they are very nicely written they are very attractive the point is it's a big challenge for us to really implement them it also states reaffirming the integr integrity of the faculty and in institutional leadership positions through merit appointments and career progression based on the teaching research on and service the middle aspect the research aspect is actually going down and 
visibly is not visible and most colleges it is almost not there so this is something that we need to address upon because research if you put that word research in this old document in 60 pages it appears in 37 pages research about research so research is a key to knowledge development and so on every higher education institute then must have essential infrastructure like modern digital uh, enabled classrooms clean drinking water clean working toilets offices labs and pleasant classroom spaces this is what the uh, policy demands from us research possibilities if i go for that it says both uz and pg will have a component research component in that that means even in the undergraduate colleges we should have research possibilities and the teachers should be into research so that they can guide students towards smaller but uh, effective project works create an environment for holistic education to develop creativity and originality leading to innovative brains and this is only possible when you have got very good teachers in of both at college and the undergraduate university levels the teachers will play a key role and thus i emphasize uh, their recruitment and progression or pro uh, the promotion should be very keenly looked into the governance to ensure autonomy good governance empowerment and outstanding research at a prerequisite as a prerequisite for outstanding education and research in this state research incentive and teaching uh, the universities now will be classified into three the research incentive universities teaching universities and deg degree granting institutions these will be the autonomous colleges which will be given to grant the degrees it will come in 2040 we are not in a hurry now but if you look at research in intensive universities then 20 years will be very small time to really convert a, in any university to a research incentive intensive uh, infrastructure and uh, university so we have to be very very vigilant and careful in do looking into it then it comes the funding has never been a big, very big issue in orissa for uh, for higher education though all well we can we cannot go beyond what is spent on education what we are spending in all, all over the country is 10 percent of our total spend on educa higher education or any education as such so financing for affordable and uh, quality education for all has to be a serious concern to look upon all HEIs to aim to be self-sufficient by 2030. So what the policy uh, envisages and demands is that all higher education institutes now should learn to earn and the institutes themselves should be able to raise funds on their own. Where from it will come? From the self-supporting programs? Yes, if it, uh, of course it is a possibility, but then the self-supporting programs should be planned in a way in the subjects in the specialization where no other institute in the india in the state or maybe in, in the country are able to really impart that kind of education for something that the student can read and read anywhere else could not be made a self-supporting scheme what is uh, really what i feel is if you if you uh, i'm I, I was a teacher in, in madhya pradesh if you go for the madhya pradesh system then what we have found is that most universities have their own endowment which goes to hundreds of crores and this has come from fees only and these fees are from courses which are not normal courses but the courses which are away from the general stream of teaching and they are the self-supporting self-funding courses which earns a lot of money for the institute and the students out of which are not just passing out but they are signing everywhere they are found all over the world the key areas of funding will be shall be adequate teacher and uh, staffing and teacher development learning resources, student uh, supports, and well-being. These are the areas which will need uh, attention of funding in particular. And in addition to that, some seed money for initiating research because the National Research Fund will be very uh, peer reviewed and peer competitive. So getting grant and fund from that will not be that easy a thing. So people should be helped to go to a particular level so that they can ask for funding from there. We have to go in for a teacher centric um, curricula towards research infrastructure incentive, incentives that we give. Now we are possibly one of the, 
few uh, states where we have got a common syllabus for the undergraduate, which is, of course, uh, good. But now, of course, that will not be applicable to all the subjects that we teach. Many, many things have to be, courses have to be developed, which will be teacher centering, depending on the institute where a particular teacher is there. Then those courses cannot be common to all. And then these teachers will be awarding uh, credits which will go to the credit bank of that student and he can use it at any point of time. For example, if somebody comes to me for a certificate program or a diploma program in neuroscience, I will train him in neuroscience. I give a two credit or three credits for that and that he can go and keep it in his bank. And at a later time point when he needs neuroscience to be projected as one of his areas of expertise, he can say, I have also read neuroscience. So I've got two examples to, to give you this one gentleman called Professor Pravat uh, Sinha, uh, who is uh, leading the uh, project uh, Prakas in Delhi. He's a scientist from MIT and also works in Cambridge. So what is it? See, he is a, a B.Tech from IIT Delhi. Then he went to went on to do MS and PhD in electric engineering and then converted himself to a neuroscientist and then identified and gen he could uh, genuinely find this, that those children who are blind from the very time of birth do have the neurons which are active and they supply to the ear. And if we can do something to let that boy see, look at things, then these neurons can possibly develop the visual circuit also. And then the child will be able to see. So these children usually have very early cataracts. So the lens does not permit them to see. So what they are now doing is up to the age of 21, they have done, but largely at the age of seven, eight or 11, they remove that cataract, place, a, art, place an artificial lens into that and let the child see. This is a great service to the human mankind. At the same time, wonderful research that he is doing. Similarly, a few weeks back, we had Ted Price who was talking here is a, is a mechanical engineer turned into a neurosurgeon and chronic pain neurosurgery uh, expert and now, now he has created instruments and chemical substances i mean the drugs which can be used for chronic pain and he has translated all of them and has patented them and he has got a company now for selling all this so how is it possible is it possible because the person who has got certain credits in different things can possibly later on convert it into something else so from a teacher centric university only we can uh, we can enter into such uh, small but uh, smaller but uh, creative credits for which the student can be benefited. Then I would like to talk a little bit about effective governance and leadership for HIs, HEIs. The common feature of all world-class institutes has been existence of an uh, of a strong self-governance and outstanding merit-based appointment of institutional leaders. I'm not talking about teachers now. I'm talking about the leaders, the directors, the vice chancellors. This will ensure the leadership of the highest quality to promote a culture of excellence. It states in the policy, and I quote, all leadership positions in the institutions must be offered to persons with high academic qualifications and demonstrated admin administrative and leadership capabilities, along with abilities to manage complex situations. So it depend, demands quite a bit from a person and to find and uh, identify such people and bring them as leaders of the HEIs is a challenge to the governance and is a challenge to the committee who makes them appear. They must have strong social commitments. It goes on saying it, they must have strong social commitment, believe in teamwork, pluralism, ability to work with diverse lot of people and a positive outlook. So all these in one man has to be chosen to be the leader of a HEI so that the HEI can move from a particular level to a higher level. And it goes on saying that when this leader changes, it is responsibility of governance to take care of this, that the next man who comes in does not stop all the good practices that has been created by this gentleman who was leading earlier. So what is important now is uh, a two, a two point, three points really. One is appointing a really robust set of teachers who are capable enough of developing themselves as very good teachers, researchers, and uh, and crafts, uh, 
craftsmen for for the students to make them uh, wholesome uh, entities and then going on to develop the universities and institutions to a great level and then possibly to choose and identify leaders who would lead these institutions carefully so what is important now the important thing in this is that we have to look into the policy with a more uh, with a better scanner perhaps i i i would say we need to discuss it much more than what we could do in 6 days time and then we come together again and again to see what are the best in these policies that we can as as, as people of orissa take up as a part of orissa's institutional development and it also says every institute should develop a uh, um, idp institutional development plan not for uh, one year or two years it says five years 10 years 15 years and 20 years so if you have got a plan for 20 years now with increments of five then possibly we have got a road map road uh, road map ready for every institute and these road maps should be threadbare discussed amongst the teachers of the university at the higher level like the deans and the head of the departments of the university then amongst the vice chancellors of the state and with the uh, department and the minister of higher education of the state so that everybody knows what the institute plans for 20 more years to come and then we look forward to achieving that if every university if every higher education institute will have this road map then possibly if not all most of them will come to this what is expected by 2040 is many of these uh, autonomous uh, colleges will become become degree granting colleges then the what is expected from such colleges then not only research and teaching and this but a great degree of integrity in the system so that then only they can perhaps become degree granting uh, institutes because their degree and degree of any other university will be similar, considered similar. So the students should not be uh, carried away by this, that uh, this is a degree being given, but it is not at par with uh, all other universities. That should be taken care of. And what we aim by uh, 4040, that, that, that is said, and Ulissa is really doing good in that. Uh, it may not happen that way, but what they have expected is that every district will have a uh, have one of such institutes, maybe an university or a degree granting institute. They have called about university, but I would say if every district has got a degree granting institute, then also our job is done to a great extent. These are all hopes and we have got uh, every, every vice chancellor and the guests that we invited have discussed on this about possible implementation policies. And they are all available in the YouTube and the Ravensa University channel. And uh, we can, anybody can listen to that. But before I call upon uh, uh, Professor Asok Das, I would like to, like my team to play those few lines that uh, Dr. Kasturi Rangan uh, had observed for the Orissa state as such and its education system. This is very interesting that people, uh, the countrywide, have got large hope from a state. Uh, called Orissa. So let us listen to uh, his views, uh, a few sentences, then I'll request Professor Asok Das to speak. Silpa, can I have the clips, please? I would like to express my grateful thanks to Professor Ishan Kumar Patro, Vice Chancellor of Ravenshaw University, for extending this privilege to me. I'm extremely happy to know that two of the illustrious educationists of this country, Professor Anil Kumar Sahasrabuddhe and Dr. Ms. Pangaj Mittal, are also addressing this inaugural session. In fact, I should say I've been closely associated with Professor Anil Sahasrabuddhe on several aspects of education and I'm so happy he is one of the very articulate speakers on the matters of policy and also an expert in implementation. So I'm happy that he has been, he has accepted this invitation to be with all of us at the inaugural session. It is indeed gratifying to note that Professor Ishan Patro and other members of the organizational committee has taken care to invite the vice chancellors of different universities of Odisha to participate in this important national webinar on higher education 
as envisaged in the National Education Policy 2020. Your Excellency, Honorable Governor of Sri Professor Ganesh Shilal, is a man of high erudition, having had his educational career with distinction. Subsequently, as a distinguished and respected teacher, he created generations of students who today occupy high positions across various segments of the society. Besides being an academic of great accomplishments, His Excellency has also been in the field of public service, bringing to bear his influential role in improving the welfare and quality of life of individual citizens. I am delighted that such an eminent personality has taken special interest in not only supporting the National Education Policy 2020 for the benefit of the state and people of Odisha, but it also to bring his own versatility and experience in translating this policy to ground realities. It is most appropriate that Ravenshaw University has taken the lead role in organizing this national webinar series, particularly recognizing that this university is the proud inheritor of the legacy of the erstwhile Ravenshaw College the oldest high, higher education institution in the state, as mentioned by the Vice Chancellor. The power of education is amply demonstrated by this single institution, which has contributed immensely to the growth and evolution of modern Odisha in almost every field of activity. I would like to compliment Professor Ishan Patru and his colleagues for this very important initiative as a part of transforming the educational system aligned with the principles enunciated in the NEP 2020. The NEP 2020 has been the focus of both our Honorable President and Honorable Prime Minister, who have personally presided over several of the discussion sessions which were held by the Ministry of Education in the recent past. Today's event will certainly be a pioneering step towards the state of Odisha's resolve to transform itself into a vibrant knowledge society with contemporary relevance, including the acquisition of the 21st century. So, uh, uh, with this, I would, uh, they, they there is a small uh, something is lost there. He also had very high uh, opinion about our uh, state leadership of uh, Sri Navin uh, Naikji, and uh, he has a great expectations about this policy to be taken over by government of Orissa. Now I would uh, request uh, <coughs> Professor Asok Das to begin his uh, discourse. Professor Asok Das, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Honorable Minister Higher Education, uh, Dr. Arun Kumar Sahu, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Ravensa University, then all the esteemed uh, participants and listeners to this series of six days of uh, this webinar on uh, implementation possibilities of the National Education Policy 2020. Now, uh, first, I must uh, gratefully acknowledge my thanks to Rabinsa University for having uh, invited me to uh, come here and speak to you. Rabinsa is considered to be the ultimate stage where if you get a chance to speak, and I, I am very grateful that this has come to me. Now, uh, if, if I look at uh, the uh, uh, last five days, in fact, it is a great thing that Professor Patra has been putting it on YouTube. And so it is possible to uh, have a look at the various speakers. And uh, he very cleverly and very uh, well organized by dividing the entire NEP into various topics and then assigning specific topics to individual vice chancellors and other eminent speakers. And of course, Professor Kasturi Rangan and Professor Sahasra Budde and Dr. Pankaj Mittal brought a lot of brand value 
to this particular webinar. Now, as you, as you, uh, uh, the essence of national education policy has been that it is a concept that provides an India-specific model to become the champion of the knowledge economic society that is going to be there, there in the next century and maybe extending to the millennium. And the fact that it is India-specific are uh, reflected in two aspects. One, of course, is that it is trying to build a foundation of our culture, language, heritage, and what we have, and integrating that. And it also wants to integrate the diversified socio-economic condition, people from different conditions into the system. And that way, the uh, policy that uh, government of Odisha has been having towards higher education uh, matches with this. Now, however, what I heard during the last three, uh, four days, now we, we heard some very good things. By and large, my impression was that every speaker who spoke, barring I think two, he, everybody was extremely optimistic about this. In fact, I thought each one was very happy that such a policy has come and that it is going to make India Vishwaguru. This is something that I have been I have been hearing across that we would become Vishwaguru. Now that of course depends on the uh, way we implement. The second part that I heard was, uh, for example, Professor Sahasrabhute telling that AICT has already implemented for most part the spirit of NEP 2020. Director IIT Raj uh, uh, was he, he was a guest, and he says that uh, IIT has already adopted most of the core values of NEP 2020. Then I heard, uh, I think BC Utkal University mentioned that Jawaharlal Nehru University and Delhi University have been doing almost the things that NEP does. So if IITs, AICT, Delhi University, JNU, the top class universities, have already got the spirit of NEP 2020, then it probably leaves the poor cousins, the state universities and the states to find ways and means to implement it. So there, there comes in my mind, I, I must tell you up front, that I am, uh, I will not be ecstatic about this particular policy. And I must also make it clear that I am not talking about government policy. Honorable minister is here. He would probably speak about what the government feels about it. I am an academician. I have been a researcher. And this is a very interesting document. And I'll probably talk how, in my view, it we should start working on this. Because this is here to stay. Because we now find that IITs, IIMs, National Law University, Jawaharlal Nehru Universities are already telling us that they already have implemented in spirit the uh, national education policy. Then it behoves on us to put this, how, how, how do we make it work? Now I have, let me play a little bit of devil's advocate. Now nobody has played the devil's advocate because this policy has become holier than thou, and so nobody dares to talk uh, about uh, questions this because it will be negative problem. But I sometimes wonder that for 70 years we have been telling our youth that you specialize. If you are a physicist, be a physicist and the top physicist. If you are a chemist, if you are a biologist, read biology. Today we are asking him that generalize, become more well-rounded. Of course, Einstein was a violinist. And uh, Humi Bhava used to play sita. Uh, he, he, I think, uh, piano accordion. He was a great Western musician. But the fact still remains these were hobbies. And physics were their first love. So right now, we have started telling our students and children exactly the reverse. Ki ye jo pura specialization, specialization, specialization you are going in, that does not make you well rounded. To make you well rounded, you anthropology, 
थोड़ा साइकोलॉजी पढ़ो थोड़ा हिस्ट्री पढ़ो एंड वी आर टेलिंग हिस्टोरियन कि थोड़ा फिजिक्स पढ़ो नाउ दिस इज समथिंग i i would uh, i i am still wondering because these are philosophical questions that's not be tackled because these questions will come when you go to the field the second part that happens that for last few years we have been telling the students that acquire a skill and get a job acquire a skill and certain when the last 5 years you know this i have been feeling that education which was supposed to give us knowledge and prepare us for a livelihood we are now suddenly getting into a back box and trying to get a job of five figure salary out or six figure salary out now that is something suddenly it has changed because after 70 uh, seven decades we feel that that was the wrong direction so these are some fundamental questions i suppose i go to the field and tell a student that now you must read history because then only you will become well rounded now we feel aap he can ask sir 70 years tak aap kya feel kar rahe the so this is this is a counter counter point that must be raised because when you go to implement a policy you must look at points and you must look at counter points i am telling this because i did not find anybody daring to talk about counter points. now then of course we uh, come to the national education policy which has been passed by government of india our state government is deliberating and will come up with an implementation plan now the questions that we must ponder are that first major issue that is that nep is basically an amalgamation of the failure analysis of the education policy so far and synergizing with what dr radha krishna and mahatma gandhi in his 1938 address at vardha said about the experiential education experiential education is a dictionary word for what mahatma gandhi talked about maitali so this was this is this is a fantastic document now now what has happened is the policy to reform and get into the right track has come and we must start implementing this and therefore my team next this was the uh, intro i wanted to set the coordinates of where i am going so i want philosophize now because i have heard a lot of philosophy philosophizing so let me come to my thinking on how do we implement in the state of odisha we are in odisha odisha has a fantastic education system and we are very fortunate that we have a very empathetic government today to the education system education system last 5 years the kind of money the kind of help the kind of response we get from the government i would not have expected but let us look at what the governments must do immediately first is for government of india and government of the uh, the state government is to resolve the issue of 6% gdp now 6% gdp has been talked about since 1968 and this 6% gdp and we are somewhere around 3.8% today and the 20000 crore for per year of national research foundation this is something that the governments must resolve this first that how much money we are going to spend and from where if you look at the csr funding has been discussed now if you look at the total csr spending it is about 50000 crores and if you look at the percentage it is about 0.25% of the gross domestic product so that is one issue that governments have to look at and that educational institutions would not be able to look at the second part that we governments must look at is the academic credit act the academic abc academic bank of credits is a fantastic concept now how do you make it work you remember the operating terminology the critical terminology nobody uh, has uh, pointed it out is a graded autonomy in 15 to 20 years what does a graded autonomy means if you do not make the grade you do not become autonomous and therefore 
if i get a from a lower grade institution make get a credit completed three credit course will i be able to go to a higher in, level institution with that credit so the regulators the governments the uh, governing organizations of this must come out clearly because academic credit the bank of credits can be implemented immediately so that is something that must be looked at the next issue for the governments is to look at the pupil to teacher ratio who is the policy wants at 20 for higher education now if you look at odisha we have approximately 10 to 12 lakh of higher education students and in 20 15 years we are going to double it because our gross enrollment ratio is somewhere around 23 so we may go to somewhere around 25 lakh teachers 25 lakh students in higher education now if we go to 25 lakh students then we look at 1.25 lakh teachers faculty now today the this will be including the private and the government sector both but then the government sector, I, I was making a calculation that for next 10 years, we must add more than 2,000 teachers, faculty per year. Now, this is something that we need to plan that the teacher recruitment and the teacher normalization of faculty per student in an institution. Suddenly, Ravensa, instead of having 400 faculty, may need 600 faculty. Instead of 257, we have to have 450 faculty to meet all the objectives of NEP. And I think this is also something that the policymakers who have to look at. And the third, that is the governments have to look at, is the board of governors. Now, the policy proposes board of governors who are independent, who are academic, and all institutions must have them. Odisha, for example, has nearly 1,100 institutions. Now, you need to have 1,100 institutions full with maybe three academics at least for board of governors. So how many it makes? 3,300 board of governors members in, academic, uh, in academics. Do you, can you find them very quickly? Can you, do you have them? Please ask this question that how if there is going to be a process of forming of a board of governors for the institution. Then the immediate task for the institutions to do in Odisha must be that every institution must get into NAC accreditation. Remember, very soon the regulation is going to come that you either have a NAC accreditation beyond maybe it will be fixed at B plus to be able to gradually go towards the autonomous status. And if you do not get B plus, then you may get phased out as an institution. So that is the accredit 1100 institutions. Accreditation and a target should be maybe two years, 24 months. Now, so when you have a target of that, and an outcome target of 60 to 70 percent reaching a a grade it is a, it is a very tall task and my friends my academics who have been odisha has already prior to the pandemic we had a very urgent and emergency program of mentoring the institutions for nac accreditation and that was i think 200 300 institutions at a time and so this is a extremely difficult task and who should be focused immediately by the university, at least the affiliating university, before they become non-affiliating, that should be taken care of. The next is, as Isan, uh, Isan Babu very clearly said, that everybody has talked about an institutional development plan. Believe me, I when I was in Utkal for the World Bank OHCP project, we were the mentor, mentoring maybe somewhere around 125 institutions to prepare an IDP for five years. It was only a five years IDP. It's an extremely difficult task. And the institutions very simply say that a auditorium bana denge, a library building bana denge, go, uh, so there is very little understanding about 
how do you want your institution to grow for next five years 10 years 15 years 20 years this as a slogan this is very good prepare a idp it will go you if sir talked about madhya pradesh madhya pradesh handed over the entire idp making to iim indore and iim indore as usual made a very fantastic job of saying nothing in that uh, document i have seen that document also so that is going to be a task and i also think that the university consortium of odisha which is one of the best practices that government has put in to take up this idp preparation for all institutions and in universities themselves with a lot of seriousness because this is going to become tough and the third thing which should start immediately in implementation is there is a major content and regulation change at the ug and pg level and i i believe that it is very easy to say it should be now cognitive oriented it should be curiosity driven it should be three year four year research degree very good i can sit in a air conditioned room and dictate these instructions go to the field sit with the board of studies member and make these regulations and the content change those of you i am sure a lot of you have made a lot of you are part of the model syllabus development and you know how nerve cracking it is to for people to agree what is our path and that is why most of the institute say ugc jo kar diya usko hum le lenge so this is something again that we should look at then the moment we talk about this two issues are going to come one is a history major may want to talk to read physics a psychology major may want to study law and like that and if that happens i think the syllabus must have now facility for the pre courses pre requirements the prior a priori requirements and that should happen and therefore the universities institutions must look at these things then of course the fourth point that comes which is again government uh, should be government driven is restructuring the institutions into three types and that i guess would come after two years and here there are many philosophies we have heard here uh, cluster concept being talked about i have heard about stand alone institutions and there is a misnomer uh, probably my understanding is different that the legal and the medical are still inside a medical institution is also supposed to become multidisciplinary and a history major can take a pre medical course like in usa and then go into medicine few ones then of course we have to think about because the new policy gives a little amount of trust on the new language culture development both in research and teaching and so we now is the time to get central grant and get into language university strengthening and the culture university strengthening we the vocationalization and the teacher training which will become part of our university system is going to be again another one good thing is our technical institutions are going to become part of the multi multidisciplinary organizations so the restructuring should also look at the vocationalization possibility in every institution because every institution should have a teacher <coughs> or means to get engineering teaching vocational teaching cultural teaching language teaching transliteration teaching whatever comes and that is something every institution should give so this and third fourth again for the government is you know the concept of this merut multi um, uh, disciplinary educational uh, research in uh, universities now i believe we should make a bid for at least getting 3 to 5 nehrus in odisha you see when a move starts the early bird gets the prize and so right now we must uh, design where we want the nehrus or if you want to convert an existing institution like ravensa utkal into merus make a proposition and the early birds will get the prize
to make national education policy 2020 work digitization is going to be the most important fact in the entire story if odisha will not be able to implement it properly and make its youth sign it will be because we have not been able to digitize and create a digital backbone as we should have complete e governance e libraries e life cycles e the bank helping programs e teaching learning the learning management systems and research this is something i think the consortium of universities can do it because one university may have problem because it may not have the expertise to do or the magnitude is not understood and then of course there is a problem of always audit and all that but you imagine if you are going to scale the research funding if you are going to scale the teaching learning uh, ceiling then you must be digitized because then only the governance is proper and a researcher will accept fund spend it submit a report and work well so there is a case for strengthening digitization immediately and this should be a project for next year the next part where we need implementation immediately is the teacher training now the teacher training is of two parts one is domain training and that should be done because the new education policy says you must have a hrbc in every human resource development center in every university so do the domain teaching there but the crux of the system is that we must have academic leadership training which ishan babu said and i think in this part was talked by uh, vc honorable vc utkal university and there it was said that we are a country of 1.3 billion people and at any point of time getting thousand leaders is not a difficulty i do not know how this conclusion has come but unless you have a structured program of what leadership is you may get thousand good managers at any point of time but getting thousand leaders to get into uh, the university system and transform it you must have a structured leadership development and i would say why not take the gopavandu academy and open a wing for academic leadership training in odisha and so this is something the teachers training of the faculty facilitation of these teachers is probably one of the most important thing both leadership and domain and this is the leadership which can be divided into department heads maybe chairman pg council and also people who can become vice chancellor it will make a pool it will make a cadre who are the chancellor ready then of course we need every university to have open distance learning because that is the key the key to increasing increasing gross enrollment ratio is threefold one is increase the input and which is that i think um, Ma madam pankaj mittal said that at the school level you are getting only 46% of the field how are you expecting to go to a gross enrollment ratio and in odisha particularly going from 23 to high it is going to become extremely difficult and therefore i think we need odl very badly open distance learning and tie up with odisha state university national research foundation is a gift but it is a gift only to the people who are prepared and ready to jump ready to take the leap across the ocean and so our steps should be sensitize the faculty try identify in the state these are our cross areas create a pool of research proposals you can always create all vice chancellors create start creating pool of research proposals then of course make a pool of mentors in the state start a mentoring and of course incentivize a good researcher and penalize somebody who is not doing research despite all kinds of facilities so this is something that we must work if we want to take advantage of nrf you see nrf 
is bringing in at least by announcement 20000 crore per year and the first year whoever is ready would get take the money and get established so please think about this that nrf needs a preparatory stage and consorted all by chancellors together should start preparing for making a pool of possible researchers and possible state wide cross areas then of course internationalization my suggestion would be which probably may not get accepted is that start internationalization at the phd and pdf post doctoral fellow level which will be much easier because we uh, like uh, honorable vc param put said that we are not able to provide visa facilities uh, jobs to them so why should they come except for under countries who are worse than us and therefore we must make regulatory changes at the foreign participation and of course start immediately with the doctoral and post doctoral system and then of course every university right now start incubation and entrepreneurship program and of course the um, at at least at the state level because at central level they have still not put the benchmark for the policy evaluation we keep this uh, evolve a benchmark for the outcome of this now i would end very quickly now we need to treat this is my experience with both the department of atomic energy and space and i am not surprised that this has come out of professor kasturi rangan who has been an extremely great and uh, eminent scientist because this policy thinks like a scientist thinks a researcher thinks and so we must treat this as a 15 year project and you know how project work the project works with a critical path analysis the project works with time bound schedules the project works with every year every 6 month schedules the project works on analysis of interconnectivity a work breakdown structure and then corrective measures at each stage so nep as everybody has said is a very positive hopeful structure to go to vishwa guru atmanirbhar bharat no doubt about it provided the last thing that i want to talk about is that it should be made into a project academics are not very good at projects because they have not run projects they say kya project hai academic is open field and we must learn we must teach and this would take time project is a project and if nep national education policy 2020 is not treated like a project of 15 years with all the achievable goals then of course i would be extremely cynical that whether we would be able to achieve all the milestones that it has got financial model i have spoken a little the last one is the value system i do not think the policy gives how exactly the value system can come in except for the two or three beautiful things one is starting of industrial internship at from sixth standard onwards experiential learning at each stage and that is the way the value system would come up uh, today's students today's children you start telling what was gita what was bhagavad gita yes they may appreciate but the value system inculcation remains in professionalism remains as mahatma gandhi said in the labor integrating labor with education theoretical knowledge and that is where the value is likely to come and so we must start these components the experiential learning immediately and integrate this into the system so this is basically what i wanted to talk about basically playing the devil advocate and coming to the brass tracks of given an opportunity how this would be implemented in a 15 year project and which are the steps we would be able to take immediately i hope i have communicated what i wanted to say and it has been a very interesting interesting 6 uh, days 5 6 days which i have listened at least first 3 days live and i must thank the entire ravensha uh, fraternity to have done this so that we can proceed beyond this 
Thank you, Professor Patra, for having given me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now play the the other clip of uh, Professor Kasturi Rangan, where he went on his lecture, and then at the later part of it, he has something to say about the Urissa governance. Please listen to this. Silpa, can we have the clipping here? For cited chief minister, which I am sure will translate itself into a policy in action at the ground level, thereby propelling India to a higher pedestal as a knowledge driven, vibrant society. Odisha is indeed very fortunate in having Honorable Professor Ganesh Ilalji, a person of erudition and deep commitment to public service, at the helm of affairs to provide an overall vision and leadership. Further, you have a very dynamic and far-sighted Chief Minister, Honorable Sri Naveen Patalji, whose deep commitment to bring enrichment and enlightenment through education is indeed auditory. With this kind of leadership at the top, I'm sure this policy is set to get the highest priority in the overall scheme of things in this day. Odisha is sure to reach higher levels of preeminence in the field of education and training, taking cognizance of the type of rich experience that each one of you possess as leaders of higher education. I wish you all the best in this noble and vital endeavor. Thank you very much. I, I do not know how, but uh, the Azus were Ravensa leads in many things. Two years back, before this NAP, before we just started, uh, by the time we just started uh, talking about NAP and our suggestions on this, we had started quite a few things, you know, in Ravensa, which really fits into the need of the uh, policy itself. They said uh, that students should have an opportunity to learn and earn. We decided to have a Research come uh, train teaching come research fellowship, and which have finally even government of Orissa has started this and now it is uh, there in the scheme. We decided to have uh, so wings like uh, centers on women's studies, translation and digital humanities, Orissa studies, environment and human health, neuroscience, futurology, Shirobindo's philosophy and futurology. Uh, performing arts and several certificate courses to meet to the uh, need of the policy. In addition to it, the policy somewhere says that we should have clubs for the students to do their studies in clubs itself. So we now have already got uh, the social science club, the science club, there's a photo club and the film society also. So we are in small way trying to get into this process. And uh, in the meantime, I, I'll request uh, uh, Professor Nanda to very briefly uh, give a report on the activities so that we will be listening to our ministers up. Professor Nanda, give a very brief, brief report, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everybody. Namaskar. This is G.C. Nanda, former professor of education. Uh, so, honorable minister, higher education, esteemed uh, vice chairman, Professor Ashok Kumar Das, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Ishan Patroji, Honorable CCD, Smriti Madam, and all dignitaries present there, and learned participants on the day of benediction. Honorable Minister may kindly recollect that he had been to Ravensa to inaugurate a national workshop on the draft policy during 25th, 26th July 2019. He inaugurated this workshop uh, where we were discussing the draft policy and we are trying to give some suggestions to the government of 
India and UGC. So coincidentally, sir, you are here, and uh, we are honored with your presence. We are honored with the presence of Professor Das, and I am also honored to present this report. I have been asked to be very brief. I will try to be very brief, but however, some important observations I won't skip. So, uh, this uh, present webinar series was inaugurated by Professor K. Kasturi Rangan, the chairman, committee for a draft 2019 and former chairperson ISRO on 13th October 2020. Professor Spruti Prabha Das, convener of the webinar, highlighted a threefold objectives. Objective number one, to have a threadbare discussion on the content of the policy document in the perspective of higher education and teacher education. Number two, to prepare a program of action for implementation of the national policy 2020, taking into consideration the Odisha scenario. The third one is to prepare an institutional developmental institutional development plan for Ravensa University Katak for implementation at the micro level. So Professor Kasturi Rangan, the chief architect of NAP 2020, explained the mission and vision behind the policy and emphasized on the concepts like universal access to quality education, economic growth, social justice, scientific advancement, holistic development of each child, each learner, multidisciplinary education and integration of knowledge are the broad goals of policy. He pointed out that the new structure of education, that's 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, seeks to ensure interconnectedness and integration for which the road map has been given with inbuilt flexibility. The concept of holistic multidisciplinary education and the introduction of four-year degree course are indicative of comprehensive liberal education with multiple entry and multiple exit followed by appropriate certification. The students would have more choices to pursue their interest in a multidisciplinary environment. An art student can learn science and an engineering student can learn humanities. The examples he cited. Vocational education, teacher education, and professional education have been brought under the umbrella of higher education. In fact, I am very uh, grateful to Honorable Minister that he has uh, uh, brought the training institutions under the umbrella of higher education in Odisha recently. The policy advocates for coherent ecosystem of higher education as against the current fragmented higher education. An integrated BA degree from a multidisciplinary institution can empower prospective teachers to be equipped with adequate content, appropriate pedagogy, updated technology, and a lot of experiential learning referred to by Professor Das. He wanted multidisciplinary higher education institutions to ensure high quality teaching, research, innovation, and community engagement. He wanted the students to be entrepreneurs and acquire experiential learning. The institutional framework therefore needs to be continuously reviewed for the implementation of the policy and CAFE, Central Advisory Board of Education, uh, would have a higher mandate to reset the vision of education from time to time. That is what he said. Uh, he insisted on accreditation and standard setting for higher education, leadership for effective governance, and more and more self-governing institutions coming up with effective mentoring. He described the active involvement of Honorable President, Prime Minister of India, 
Minister of Education in the formulation of the policy. He has shown his full confidence also in the dynamic leadership of His Excellency the Governor of Odisha, Professor Ganeshi Lalji, and our Honorable Chief Minister, Mr. Navin Patnaikji, for leading education from the front at the state level. This indicates that there is a strong political will for implementing the policy and making the changes happen in education in the country. He also applauded the pioneering effort of Professor Pathur, the Vice Chancellor of Provincia, for initiating the implementation of policy at the micro level. Coming over to the address by Professor Sahasra Buddhe, Chairman, All India Council of Technical Education, uh, he corroborated the two pillars explained by Professor, uh, by the chairperson, equity and quality, and added the pillars like affordability and accountability, as envisaged in the policy document. He wanted higher education system to produce all rounders grounded in practice, ready to learn throughout life. That means lifelong learning. He wanted to use technology to convert information to knowledge and knowledge to wisdom. According to him, the journey of education has been very slow in India, particularly in aspirational districts. And therefore, there is a need to adapt and implement the policy and mobilize resources along with necessary course correction. He clarified that full autonomy would take time. Therefore, degree granting autonomous institutions need hand holding to come under the umbrella of higher education. The transformation of higher education visualized in the policy depends on the appropriate multidisciplinary curriculum, effective teaching learning process. He assured that funds would be available for research through National Research Foundation. Of course, we have to be ready, as pointed out by Prof. Das. Forthcoming institutions have to have collaborations and linkages within the country and beyond the country for internationalization of higher education. He wanted to see the campus of foreign universities in India and the campus of 100 best Indian universities abroad. He tried to reconcile the Indian value system, citing the example of Nalanda and Takshila, and technologization of education through online mode to ensure quality of education through continuous teacher empowerment programs. He, certified, he clarified the concept of light and tight regulation envisaged in the policy. By light, he means transparency and self-disclosure, and by tight, he means to being accountable. So he also gave the example of AICT already in the process of implementing 21st century skills by updating their curriculum. Dr. Mittal, he wanted a short analysis of every institution, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. The institution has to develop its own profile, own vision collectively. And she was uh, uh, very uh, action oriented in the sense uh, that she gave a blueprint of actions to be undertaken. She advocated to start the process of de affiliation exercise gradually with capacity building and hand holding of the institution to improve accreditation status of the university, already pointed out by Professor Das, to indicate concerted effort to increase GR to 50% by 2030. That's the target given in the policy. To plan curriculum for multidisciplinary education, to ensure completion rate at the school stage, to which uh, present stands at 42% only. So we, we cannot uh, be alienated from school education to increase our GR to the level of 50%. We have to ensure completion rate. We have to introduce communication, culture, and sports, sports <coughs> development, plan for research from UG level. From UG level, keeping in view the multiple entry and exit point, to introduce one year capsule curriculum complete in itself, 
to make amendments of statutes and ordinance to give a fresh look to teacher education program with the introduction of project problem solving online teaching blended learning flipped classroom provision of audio and video before the lecture to create internship bank for every subject for ensuring experiential learning to identify frontline areas of research with focus on application to give a look to assessment strategies also with tools and techniques like assignments and projects and to identify people for fast track promotion the day two began with professor patro in chair delivering welcome address after the dignitaries were introduced by dr rudmishri vedmata professor r v rajkumar director iit bhubaneswar delivered his discourse on creating a symbiosis between technical education and higher education in the perspective of national policy professor rajkumar reiterated the broad features of nep 2020 and advocated for academic bank of credit which was reiterated by professor das with the scope for multiple entry and exit he wanted higher education institutions to follow credit based system with the scope for students to earn credits for from different institutions he further stressed on making students sensitive to ethical human and constitutional values with a respect for pluralism social justice and democracy so uh, at the tertiary level higher education has to equip students with uh, various life skills like communication like communication <clears throat> teamwork resilience creativity critical thinking like that and he justified the necessity for multilingual education and open and open and sorry sorry open and distance learning and wanted incubation centers for facilitating entrepreneurship in an integrated system of higher education where learning and earning will go together so professor deepak behra was the second speaker of the day he spoke on structure and curriculum of higher education as envisaged in the policy document uh, he clarified the concept of a university as a multidisciplinary institution of higher learning that offers ug and pg programs therefore our university system has to start ug programs then uh, <clears throat> professor tonkeshwar was the last speaker of the second day he was uh, speaking on nep 2020 opportunities and challenges wanted national testing service to conduct national aptitude test instead of entrance test that is something different although he appreciated the idea of flexibility in higher education he perceived the need of an environment to accommodate students who are to be educated as entrepreneurs for the world of work so he suggested for development of system of higher education for credit transfer it has to evolve he expected that only quality conscious degree granting autonomous colleges would survive and sub standard institutions will automatically phased out dr tushar pani associate professor moderated the talk and uh, extended a vote of thanks and then uh, professor somendra mohan patnaik vice chancellor of kolkata university delivered his discourse on governance related issues with reference to nep 2020 professor patnaik described the policy as a reflection of collective aspiration and visualize university to be a vibrant multiple disciplinary community in the pattern of nalanda and takshira he observed that both faculty and institutional autonomy are the key for the quest of knowledge he acknowledged that each student is unique and differ and different strategies are required for handling different students he explained uh, the concept of uh, this board of governors and appreciated that uh, it is based on the machiavellian principle titles do not honor men rather men honor the title uh, he 
went to the extent of suggesting an overlapping period between entry and exit of Vishij. Uh, the second speaker on the day was Sri Krishna Dev Rao, Vice Chancellor of National Law University. And uh, he explained how he had started implementing uh, the ideas envisaged in the policy in the National Law University. He has started all these things, internship, uh, technology integrated learning in National Law Universities, short term courses, 21st century skills introduced, particularly in the integrated programs. Then uh, PK Mahapatra uh, extended vote of thanks on that day, and the day four began with uh, Professor Patro welcoming uh, dignitaries. Professor Atanu Kumar Pati, Vice Chancellor Gangadhar Mehr University, highlighted on the research and evaluation in higher education and optimization of learning environment in the context of NEP 2020. He uh, gave a very dismal picture of uh, India so far as uh, higher education is concerned, how we are trailing behind in all sectors. And uh, that is because of uh, uh, many problems. Uh, one of the problems he pointed out, uh, pointed out fragmented higher education, limited access to higher education, ineffective regulatory system, things like that. And he gave his suggestions. Then Professor Govind Chakrapani, a man with uh, international exposure, delivered on new paradigms in higher education research under the NAP 2030. He cited uh, American examples how a student can also study physics. A history student can study physics without any uh, mathematical background. Uh, different institute, different American experiences. He started and concluded learning should be a fun for students and teaching should be also a fun for students. And Professor Sikant Mahapatra deliberated on distance and online learning a gateway to knowledge society. Professor Mahapatra was very emphatical in saying that formal system is not good enough to increase the GER. Therefore, we have to go online. We have to follow ODL mode. And he pointed out various advantages of ODL from the point of view of access, attainment, enrollment, and quality. That is how even we can also address the problem of equity ODL mode. And Professor Rusik Shanapati, he is the director of NCRT and he uh, spoke on overhauling teacher education, both free service and in service. Uh, <coughs> he said that because of these key features of national policy and education, we need competent and effective teachers. And for creating competent and effective teachers, we have to overhaul the system of teacher education. And uh, he uh, gave the example of uh, this integrated model, which is a, a tried out model. And uh, that is recommended in NEP. He also gave the example of in-service education, how he is conducting uh, in NISTA. And uh, I think uh, after Professor Sinapati, uh, it's a uh, vote of thanks was given by uh, Professor Pritirekha Das Patnaik. And today we heard the speech of Professor Ashok Das, who was very practical as a scientist, is always. And uh, he was concerned for the financial aspect, which I think we have not been able to discuss in course of the webinar. Uh, academic Bank of Credit, he told, PTR has to be included, increased and faculty recruitment has to be done on a war footing basis. And board of governors to be formed, accreditation issue, institutional development plan. He was concerned for institutional development plan, but uh, I think when we are asking primary schools to come up with institutional development plan, it should not be a problem for higher education institutions with a bit of orientation. And uh, there is a need for change of regulation as according to him, Curriculum change and strengthening of cultural university, vocational education, curriculum uh, and consortium of research he referred to. 
strengthening of digitalization teacher training he also emphasized open distance learning he already told national research foundation is a gift but we have to ready to to uh, catch the gift and internationalization that is uh, he gave the importance on an importance on project and finally he gave importance on values uh, which uh, can be inculcated through integration with through vocational education and experiential learning so almost uh, we have uh, 15 resource person across disciplines and about 1000 uh, 1, viewers uh, on the first day varying uh, from uh, 250 to 700 uh, to 1000 viewers so it was uh, a very successful fruitful fulfilling experiment experience for me and now it is up to the university to prepare an institutional development plan i am again honored to make the presentation i am grateful to professor ishan patro for his uh, uh, for this for giving me this responsibility thank you all may i now uh, request our honorable uh, minister of higher education to kindly uh, deliver the valedictory address mr minister please honorable minister Sir, am I audible to you? Honorable Minister, please present your validity function address. Am I audible, sir? Hello? Hello? Uh, OK. I'm yeah. Sir, please, please. Yeah, right. yeah please. please deliver your validity address, sir. OK. Yeah, yeah, sir. Thank you, yes. Vice Chancellor Ji, Ravensa University. After two hours deliberation by the other guests, just I have got a chance to address your validated function, the seminar. Uh, just uh, I heard Professor Ashok Das and Professor Gorang Nanda also your video clipping of uh, Dr. Kosti Ranga, the chairman of uh, NEP recommendations. Uh, and uh, Professor Smuti Pava Das, Convener, Council of Deans, Ravensa University. I derive uh, other distinguished participants. I appreciate and compliment Vice Chancellor and others for organizing six days long national webinar series. It's possible because you are there. An enthusiastic person having uh, interest in the education, education sector. I appreciate your steps. I hope the third we are discussing in this webinar will immensely help to the help to shape the national education policy to the best interest of the state and its people. National Education Policy 2020 has been announced on 29 July 2020. It is stored, it replaces the old education policy which was formulated in the year 1996, but I am not agree with this. Harner bluntly say I am not agree with this is a replacement of the 1986 education policy. Still then, some amendments are there. And they have tried a lot to bring something changes. Many of the points are highly appreciated, and I'm, I have serious doubts on the hidden, hidden agenda. 
because uh, since last many months i have been attending so many seminars webinars and deliberations before declaration of before declare uh before announcement also from our department we have arranged so many seminars union government seek for the opinion of the state governments universities and the so many institutions educational institutions and i had gone through all the seminars the opinions of various quarters and some eminent persons educationist academicians but one thing we should remember only a portion of the new education policy has been released only it consists of 68 pages i am waiting for the details draft report Uh, details uh, recommendation of the nep and what are the points in it we'll go through it properly then i can give my comments after that it looks nice this policy has generated a mixed responses and reactions while in some quarter it has been held as progressive policy many intellectuals and groups have made appearance regarding the implements of the policy that's another chapter which has been referred by professor ashok das and karan sir and other persons the participants India is a huge country with diverse cultural, linguistic, and economic development. There are variations in the literary rate among the states. When we discuss the new policy in the context of our state. particular i find many variations we should address that near about 40% of the people belong to scst category 25% of the people belong to st category living in hilly areas in inaccessible pockets of the state and 15% people belongs to sc category scheduled caste category and more than near about 50% people are uh, from backward community from the weaker section of the society which is called scbc just the uh, i mention regarding those who have been deprived from the quality education since our independence what are the projections in this policy i should be thankful to honorable chief minister we have met we have constructed more than 6000 hostels for tribal students just to bring them in mainstream which is a progressive step by the state government right now the in this pandemic situation we are going for online classes and you must be seeing the real picture of the 
online classes it's known to everybody i should not discuss we have to address that point also we have to take into account the geographical social and economic condition or context of our state that's a primary objective and another aspect when we discuss about the good things of the policy i appreciate also some of the points no doubt of it i may have some reservations for something for some points our proper forum i'll deliberate it another aspect apart from that acst and the obc people you know 7% of the population uh, st population of total population in india but we are having 25% and another aspect is according 2011 census in india 35 to 40% people are staying in urban areas in some of the states like delhi western part of our state uh, country in uh, maharashtra gujarat and if you find in punjab haryana if you go to kerala if you go to tamil nadu near about 50% people are staying in urban area if you go to west bengal also you will find 35 40% people are staying in urban area but in our state as per 2011 census only 17% people are living in urban area it might have increased to 20% or 21% in this 10 years very less people near 80% people are living in rural area out of that 80% 70-80% people are living in hilly areas in the accessible pockets again i am thankful to honorable chief minister right now communication system has been developed in our state in comparison it is much more developed in comparison to other states in neighboring states you can find out so this is another point it's a big point to analyze how to bring them into the main street to impart the quality education among them we have to analyze because you are the most intellectual persons of the country i am not saying that from the state of the country also inversely also we have to address these points this is my own analysis not only quality educations how to give them equal status how to bridge the gap between haves and have nots this is the main point we have to address i will come to that point when i will address the globalization the liberalization the privatization i will address that now how these things have been creating a huge gap a huge class system e within the system ambitious policy no doubt of it this is an ambitious policy no doubt of it promises are made my earlier guess have addressed all the things the implementation part for this region for our state's interest or the interest of our state honorable chief minister has formed a task force headed by the development commissioner 
and there are six sub committees they will analyze they will go through it they will seek the opinion from various quarters comprising of academicians social workers intellectuals teachers students guardians and they will submit a report to the state government regarding this national education policy then our government will recommend with a clear view and this report will be submitted to the center also my dear friends in 1968 and 1986 there was also projection of 6% provision for the education sector not possible from 1986 to 2020 our center there are so many governments from different parties and political affiliations we have been observing there is a decline process in the budget provision for this education <coughs> department which was earlier called as hrd right now it has been changed to education department no difference only the vertical change no difference in the name and surprisingly you will see in 2014 the budget provision is more than 4% more than 4% it has come down to 3 point something gradually it is decreasing and this great debacle corona virus covid 19 put entire the world in such a situation the as like as the 1930 depression so it is very difficult to be part of any government either state governments or union government initially they face a lot of problem we will overcome this situation will remain forever there will be change again the things will be normalized and we will overcome let us hope for the best because i always hope against the hope in funding system there should be clarity there should be clear clarity how much fund will be provided by union government and what will the share of state my own experiences some of the schemes and programs in panchayat raj department in urban development department in education department in health department earlier it was 90 10 state and center share somewhere it was 75 and 25 but since last 2014 in every scheme it has become 60 40 share i have seen in sarva shiksha abhiyan it has been stopped when we are getting some additional classrooms in the rural area which has been earlier i referred talking about the rural area and the hilly areas and tribal areas at least you my honored vice chancellor and dignitaries because you are dealing with the universities 
you must be referring that but i am talking about the primary education being an ml of my area every year i was getting some money or funds to improve the kacha houses to pakka houses at least the school buildings have been constructed out of sarva shikha abhiyan it has been stopped since last 6 years whatever comes it was the 75 25 some somehow somewhere it was 90 and 10 right now it is 60 and 40 and extra administrative cost borne by the state government it means 50 50 if this is the agenda where is the guarantee how much they will provide when the promise are made 6% of gdp will be spent on this education system whether it is aggregated from the state budget or jointly it is 6% that is another question mark also from my side we are talking about quality education what do you mean by quality education what do you mean by quality education i am asking to professor vice chancellor raven sanbar city unless you get the quality education how could you were how could we you were able to organize such kind of seminar since last 6 days from which education you have got it i am asking to professor das ashok das unless he got the quality education how he could become to this stage unless i got quality education how could i come to this stage every where every stage every every uh, i mean uh, year every era there must be quality education what do you mean by quality is i don't find the uh, uh, definition i don't find the definition you know right now since 90 1990 when pb narasingha ra was prime minister of this country and mr manmohan singh was finance minister that is the era of globalization privatization and liberalization what is the product and by product of globalization and privatization and liberalization have you ever thought of it it has some good products already we have we have been enjoying and it is also very bad message or bad precedents for the society have you ever analyzed just i am referring some examples for your past memories for your memories for your past days when you were the student of uh, uh, primary school again high school before 30 years 40 years there were only english medium or public schools situated in the district headquarters like your kotak bhubaneswar baleswar samar puri samar raurkela samar if you talk about the uh, in the context of states i am not talking about the entire nation hello hello ठीक है रॉक ठीक है यू नो पीपल दे आर गेटिंग देयर एजुकेशन फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट ओन स्कूल्स आई रिमेंबर दोस डेज दे आर वेरी 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 आई मीन क्वालिटी आई मीन best teachers of those days 
those who have been remembered by with the people right now you will find the public schools in the villages in one side the private schools and colleges have been established even in blocks and some big villages and the government schools have become just museum i am asking you one question if you will see primary schools government schools in bhubaneswar kotak you will not find a single school right now primary school in my noyagarh town not a single primary school right now of government the same as the high schools are running uh, going in that direction i am afraid of i am afraid of after some years you will find your the great old alma mater revensa might have become a museum this is the product and by product liberalization privatization and uh, globalization we have invited the global university to our country why how could we become the vishwa guru have you ever seen in this new education policy name of gandhi raja ramon rai ambedkar your sarvapalli radha krishna we have referred to kesha and that uh, nalanda what the pioneers right now before sometimes it was referred sarvapalli radha krishna is referred have you ever seen a single war for them no i am talking about quality education once in upon a time a great economist of our country told you will find a corrupt man you will see now this is my statement but he told if there is an economic impact there must be an economic crime he told why today morning i have gone through the hunger the global hunger india is in 94th position out of 107 countries these are interlinked hunger cannot pave the path for quality education you see and there is a comparison in 1950 in every aspect china is far behind from india right in every aspect China is far ahead of India. How could it become so good? Okay. And my opinion is, if you find a corrupt man, he must be an educated one. This is my statement, my analysis. I have delivered this piece in many forums, in many stages, many days. all educated persons are not corrupt note it all educated persons are not corrupt but whenever wherever you will find a corrupt man he must be an educated man because he has the opportunity to do corruption not a pigeon not a farmer because he has no opportunity to deal with the files to sign files to take a decision tell these corrupt people are the product of which system first we have to clean the system first by bringing so many policies cannot solve this problem and this privatization this globalization this spirit of competition encouraging to produce on the literature of the society 
you must be asking your bike getting me in a different mood from since my bani bear days i have been fighting a dunkel proposal fighting against this thing i have become the part of the system very painful thanks to professor das and professor patra and other persons those have been working with the state government thanks to honorable chief minister whatever need he satisfies but what is the reality i just see it's very painful to me unless you produce the honest people you can't achieve the slogan of vishu in every sphere there is a competition and it has been told that we will create so many skilled people for what why we are talking about this every man is skilled man if you work properly trained mentally are you not a skilled man sir are you not a skilled man everybody has that power and spirit but what is the aim of a student in our country so many people are also having the sacrifice nature but most of us always see own benefit and this education system again what produce produces the selfish the self centered and runs for immediate gain the three things are happening right now in this society ah the three things right now captured the entire scenario three things this is my own analysis one is selfish selfishness other is self center another is immediate gain without effort or with less effort in my village being a farmer being a laborer when i see somebody does less work and gets more when i work hard and gets less what will the future of this country you tell me sir without living that big section a few section a, a, a people of few a, a few people of a section cannot come to the help of the progress of the country entirely as a whole we have to take a holistic step only one example i can refer here in 2008 in 2008 china started fit china movement because the next year olympic Beijing Olympic <coughs> took place. They started the Fit China movement. In 2020, you will find 86% people are fit. In our country, that concept also, thanks to government of India, thanks to Prime Minister, he has declared Fit India and Fit India movement. Where we stand right now, I support this thing. You see, Israel. Every man is fit and fine. They can fight against the entire wall also. They have that power. Every mind is a productive mind. Every man is full of skill in uh, different aspect. just 
those who are in the receiving end, the people, unless they become culturally rich in every sphere, then it's very difficult to achieve our policies. I can discuss more, but uh, it is uh, just uh, uh, too late for me for other watch. Uh, I was in Tutor by election campaign. I returned back to participate in your seminar. And so many points I have to discuss. This is the, your uh, conclusion day, uh, concluding day. And uh, my only point, only nothing to be done, only one thing we should do, if our education system will produce only honest persons, with ethics, then everything will be set right. Only one point, nothing else. Nothing else. If I am honest, wherever you will throw me, I will deliver the things honestly. If I have ethics, moral ethics, I will do a lot of things for the society. If every man will think his life is not for himself, his life is for others, for the society, for the betterment of the country, and for the human civilization, everything will be set right. Yes, government is more responsible for this thing. Government should take initiation. Unless we do such things. Have you ever find anything in the books? In the uh, past, we have been uh, we have been reading some uh, uh, life history of uh, autobiography or biography of uh, the great persons. Right now, it is stopped. We have to analyze many things. This is the time to talk more things. Anyway. Uh, sir, Isan sir, I am very much uh, thankful to you. You have a mind, and since many years, uh, many months, I have been working with uh, Professor Das and to some other uh, professors, uh, lecturers, academicians. What should be our contribution? I, it's my hobby to arrange the meetings of the senior citizens basically in my group so many groups in every group there are some retired persons sincerely i have told them with folding hand sir your real work right now started they're asking well, why you see you have solved the state in your career you have taken you have taken retirement the real Work right now started. They asked me how. I told to create awareness among the people in every field, every sphere. If you can do such thing, then there will be a lot of changes. And we have uh, gone through a non detailed story that is where there are no old men. Because you have enough experience, experiments. You can contribute the society to bring them into the right path. Sir, you have not told because the mind is always young. Mm -hmm. Professor Patra and Professor Das and other persons, those who have participated in this uh, seminar, I again uh, congratulate you to have to have this kind of seminar. Thank you, sir. If anything wrong I have told, then forgive me. Thank you all. This is a great, uh, great listening to you, sir. You just only opened up your mind and heart so nicely and so truthfully. 
and uh, it's true that uh, every uh, everything has got its limitations and you have been so kindly capable of looking into the limitations and opening up the, them up for us because we have to look at the policy not, not at the national level at the local level at the state level that is why this uh, this uh, entire uh, effort was to create a strategy for implementation of this policy if at all it has to be implemented at what time we do not know in our state in relation to what we have you very rightly said sir the kind of population we have the kind of poor or not i should not use the word poor the kind of uh, uh, accessibility to education is there the kind of things we have are, what we see is only a very few percent of students actually professor pati gave us a very interesting information that only 0.5% of people all over the country comes for phd so if you look at that in 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 in, in orissa perspective we may be having even less than that so what is more important is as you said sir i would to go back to the hills the tribes and the uh, who are not getting things to bring them to the forefront and uh, provide them what they need um, I'm so happy that uh, you proved that we have all come from a education system. I remember once you had uh, said something about people asking for Oxford in Orissa, and you said if Oxford can come to Orissa, why Oxford will not be there only? So uh, I agree with you, sir. We have all gone through some some quality education at every uh, point of time. That is how we are all sitting in this seminar and discussing. But that doesn't really. Uh, mean that we should undermine the quality that we have got we are very happy that we got very good teachers in our student uh, our school time and you rightly made me remember those uh, i was all the time reading in government schools because my father used to work in all uh, district uh, headquarters where if you keep moving you don't get a seat in public school so i have got that opportunity of being in a public school and uh, studying there it's very interesting uh, observation of yours sir and uh, i appreciate the the frank analysis that you gave us and you have given us a new way of thinking and looking into the policy that is why i said one round of discussion would not be enough so we have set the ball run go and now we have got a new uh, new all new perspective after listening to you the limitations of holding this policy in our state state and how best we can possibly accept it so see the first uh, first lot of discussion has given us a big opening and i i wish uh, one of one other university will take it up and now we should discuss in this light as to what are the blocks what are the bottlenecks in the policy as far as orissa is concerned how to face this and how to get rid of it but i for the listeners for the students who are listening to it i let me tell them that orissa has taken very serious steps in higher education particularly in terms of having a common syllabus for undergraduate studies of course we have not thought of postgraduate studies now but undergraduate studies a common syllabus was a, a good step we have taken another very interesting step which you are now appearing for higher education msc or ma post graduation admission to different universities now you don't have to go to different different places for apply different universities to get into this thing we have been doing it we are very skeptical about this during covid time it may create some problem but uh, thank god even even be, uh, uh, besides the covid issue there has been no mistake no no havoc no uh, problem anywhere there is almost 100% attendance in the competitive examination and people are appearing as far as funding is concerned i must uh, say sir uh, with uh, due respect to everybody funding uh, in orissa is definitely better than the other states i have known the states where the universities even do not get full salary the states where universities have to earn their own on their own and the policy also says funding will not be just from government of orissa funding has to be raised by the institute itself i don't know how orissa universities will get into this but when i was studying in haryana long back i'm talking about uh, 40 years back that enough of landscape you know land free from uh, the after the main buildings are there all these lands were used for rice and wheat uh, 
cultivation and the money that used to come out of it they used to maintain the campus and they have to saving on out of maintaining the campus so if there can be innovative ideas of of earning the universities can definitely earning and i'm so thankful sir in a, such a busy time when the election is at the at the head and you have, you could find a time i'm sorry for making you wait to speak because i wanted you to conclude the entire so, thing so, so that everybody so, understands so the feel pure the concept was brought by honorable chief minister that is more college more university if if you look at the yes. american universities and european universities it has been uh, funded by the almanis almani and uh, a vice chancellor from a university from america i contacted when I, we are organizing the uh, platinum jubilee of uh, university uh, university pg departments in the, in the discussion he told me that 80% of the expenditure borne by the alumni already has stated if culturally ethically i'll be honest then fund is not a crisis or concern for any institutions no so the whole problem lies no we have been made a self centered selfish and running for immediate gain these he is a war you should remember properly what we are producing and they are the product of the system if i will be selfless selfish uh, i will be out of selfishness character if i will not uh, uh, be self centered if i run after the immediate gain if i look at the development of the society the some portion of my income if i income more it will be uh, donated to the institutions and i can look at the back i can again go to the root whenever we leave the institution i never look at even we never look at our parents right now which education system made them prompt not to look at their parents okay sir it is end of time i have some other arrangements thank you sir very much thank you sir thank you thank you so much sir for giving all the time thank you so much now this will be a formal board of thanks by uh, smriti prabha madam professor smriti prabha das will be delivering a board of thanks good evening one and all now we are in the concluding part of our six days journey as the convener of the webinar i am feeling happy and grateful to one and all who are behind this event who helped us who are with us to complete this journey with a grand success first of all i would like to express my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to our vice chancellor professor ishan kumar patra who is the designer mentor and patron of this event on higher education as envisaged in national education policy 2020 this grand event is his brain child and it is credit of him that from the day one in revensa he has tried his best to enhance the glory of revensa by creating this university a best platform for various national and international figures to express their thoughts and ideas to enrich the minds of revensa thank you sir for your continuous effort to uplift the name of revensa thank you sir we are indebted to professor k kasturi rangan chairman national education policy 2020 professor sastra budhe chairman aict and dr pankaj mittal secretary general iu new delhi for their inaugural speech and their spirit to give importance on technical and university education they are structural upliftment on the second day professor dipak kumar behra bc sambalpur university professor rv rajkumar director iit bhubaneswar and professor tankeshwar bc guru jambeshwar university haryana enlighten and discuss about the curriculum opportunities and challenges in higher education i also thankful to them i also express my thanks 
for the lucid and informative speech of Professor Somendra Mohan Patnaik, B.C. Utkal University, Professor Shikant Devarao, B.C. NLU, New Delhi, and Professor Santosh Ponda, former chairman, NCT, on government related issues deliberation and their discussion. On the fourth day, Professor Atanu Kumar Patti, B.C. GM University, Professor Govind Chakrapani, B.C. Barampur University, and Professor Shikant Mahapatra, B.C. Odisha State Open University, enlighten us on research and evaluation of higher education and distance online teaching learning processes through NEP 2020. Thank you, sir. On the day fifth, Professor Hari Krishna Senapati, Director NCRT, Professor Padma Jamisra, B.C. Ardi University, and Professor Madhusmita Das, B.C. FM University, discussed on equity and inclusion of NEP 2020, along with implications of pre-service and in-service in teacher education very explicitly. Thank you, sir and ma'am. Finally, on this valedictory day, we have Professor Ashok Kumar Das, Vice Chairman, Higher Education Commission, who took voluntary retirement from BIRC to serve his alma mater and whose continuous effort is to uplift the quality and accessibility of higher education of our state through various programs and projects. His today talk on state prospective changes required and challenges to be addressed is reflection of his aptitude to improve quality of education and to face the challenges and the solution. Finally, on this valedictory session, we have educationist, policymaker, and parliamentarian, our higher education minister, Arun Kumar Sahu, Dr. Arun Kumar Sahu, whom I have heard two decades ago in Kalikot College, and I have found his energy and the outlook has been sharpened in time, and his talk on emphasis on honesty is appreciable. Finally, I will fail in my duty without thanking Professor Gauranga Charan Nanda, ex-CD of Ravensa University and rapporteur of this webinar, whose continuous effort and cooperation made this webinar a grand success. Thank you, sir. Last but not the least, I must thank Parvin Babi Binza, Assistant Professor of Education of our University, and Ms. Silpa Sahu, Research Scholar, who are the person behind the screen, but responsible for all the techni technicalities of this webinar for which this webinar is possible. I am also thankful to one and all who are with us throughout this journey for a successful webinar series. Thank you and good evening.